Hey YouTube, I'm needing to clean my solar panels today, so I thought while I was up here, I'd just do an updated video of my solar array. As you can see, I've got the same solar panels that I did have, plus I've also added one more Harbor Freight panel, and I've also added this array is putting out. I also have the little Harbor Freight solar panel that's going over there to the cannon shed, but that's not going to do this array. That's on its own separate thing over there, running a fan to cool the cannon shed. So far we've been using this about two months since I've added the extra panels to it, and I can say that it has made a huge difference in the amount of energy that we're getting off the panel. We use it all day long now, like to run a fans and stuff like that so that we can actually turn the AC up a degree or two to save a little bit on our power bill. And then of course we use the lights and stuff at night. But uh, I'll take you inside and show you the inside box so that you can see what I had to change in there. Okay, here we are in the side shed, and for those of you that seen my other video about the Harbor Freight solar panel system, you've already seen this. But this is the changes that I've made. I still have the same battery bank, and right now it's working great because we got the extra panels, and so it keeps the batteries topped off, and we never have to go below 70%. Um, at some point when I get the money, I'm going to buy bigger batteries, but I just got to do it as I can afford it. And I built the system so that I could add on to it also. One thing that I did have to change is a uh, new charge controller. The Harbor Freight charge controller will only do up to 4 amps. This one will actually go up to 30. So far this has been working great. This one also has the USB ports where that we can charge our different devices if we need to for any reason. And I made a homemade combiner box which was no problem. Very easy. I did leave the Harbor Freight charge controller out here. The main reason I did is because it's got the 3 volt, the 6 volt, and the 12 volt plugs so that I can plug different things in. Like right now, the lights to my side shed, they're still on this. Now, no solar panels come to this. I just left it hooked to the battery the way it was where that I could still have juice. And as long as that's off, it's not really doing any draw that we can tell whatsoever. I did get a Tiger Claw 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. Uh, I don't know that I like it that well to be honest. This other one, which is actually a generic, it's a best tech, and it's not a pure sine wave. We went back to that one. It's a thousand watts, but there's almost no draw as far as the inverter itself. This thing so far has run dependable. It runs quiet, and like I said, there's no draw on it, so it doesn't draw out of the battery bank. Right, and the uh, the Tiger Claw. For some reason, the lights wanted to flicker a little bit. I don't have it grounded yet, so that may be what it is, but it's hooked up also. That way, if for some reason I need it, until I get it figured out, then I can just unhook this and hook right into the Tiger Claw. So, everything's still wired in in case I need it, and I can just swap back and forth. But anyway, right now, that's my update to my Harbor Freight solar panel system. It's still working great. We're still using it. Like I said, I build it where I could add on to it. And as I get money, I'm going to add more on to it. But if you're wanting a cheap way for a little backup system just to help you out in case of emergency, power outages, or anything like that, I'm telling you, I just don't think you can beat this. We've, had, we've been using it, I don't know, a couple years now, and we've had good luck with it. We really enjoyed it. My wife says that we're saving on the power bill. So, anyway, talk to you next time, YouTube.